Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be talking about mistakes I made when learning how to code. And I'm hoping through sharing these mistakes with you and what I would do differently, they will prevent you or help you not make the same mistakes and help you excel at your coding journey quicker. Before we go any further though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. And always, I want to say a big shout out to some of these amazing subscribers. Thank you for your awesome questions, comments, and support. I always base my videos around questions you have. So if you haven't already, make sure to leave them down in the comments. Okay, let's get started. Today, we are going to be talking about mistakes I made when learning how to code, what I wish I would have done differently, and I hope it will bring some insight for you when you are doing your coding journey, whether it be your first programming language you are learning, or maybe you know a bunch of programming languages but feel like there are things that could help speed up your learning process quicker. I remember when I was first learning how to code, I started out by self-teaching and I felt like I was entering into a different universe. There was so much to learn, so many different job opportunities. Did I want to be a front end, a back end? What kind of developer did I want to be? What kind of programming language did I want to learn? That would, would that depict what developer I was? What if I chose the wrong programming language to learn? What does that mean? And all of these really terrifying thoughts came in my head to the point where I almost didn't know if I should go forward with it because I thought this is going to be so much work. There's no point. Uh, it just seems too overwhelming, which is not a positive mindset to have, but that's what I had when I was starting out. And I, I've learned so much throughout my journey and I look back and there's a ton of things I wish I would have done differently, but in the same breath, I'm glad I did them because then I can share them with you and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. The first mistake I made when I was learning how to code was I got caught up in the tutorial cycle or better known to some as tutorial hell. And what this really entails is, and I've spoken about it in some other videos too, but it really entails taking tutorial after tutorial after tutorial and not putting anything uh, that you are learning to your own, to building something on your own. And I remember when I was first learning how to code, I really used tutorials as a crutch. It was a great way to feel as though I was coding and learning something, but didn't really have to build anything on my own. And there was some sense of security in that. But in turn, I really didn't pick up concepts as quickly as I would have if I would have taken the time and been brave enough to just build something on my own. I remember someone said to me when I was telling them that I got really nervous about building things on my own and they said, well, what's the worst that happens? You're just break it locally. Like who cares? The whole point is to break things so you learn. And that kind of really shifted my mindset into, okay, this is actually a positive thing. If I break things, it's, it's a good thing right now because it means I'm learning and I can problem solve and kind of reverse engineer as to, okay, this is working. And when I break this, it doesn't work. And this is why. And um, so if you are caught up in the tutorial cycle or feel as though you're taking tutorial after tutorial, one thing that really helped me was I would take a tutorial and then build onto that tutorial. So I would add on a feature. So for example, I'll give you the classic to-do list example. Uh, if you're building a to-do list and following along for a tutorial, once it is complete, why not add on the delete function? So you can delete different to-dos, or if you already have that part of it, add on some cool animation or maybe another, another part of the to-do list. I don't know, get creative, but something that you could use yourself and that you're interested in, that also will make it more fun to, to build on your own. The next big mistake that I made when I was learning how to code was I did not ask for help. When I was starting out learning how to code, I thought I needed to know everything on my own, have everything memorized, which is completely false, but something that I really had that mindset of for a long time. And it wasn't until I reached this breaking point where I was like, I can't keep on going on like this. I need someone to help me. The next biggest thing though was I didn't know anyone in the tech industry. Like I didn't have any friends in the industry, let alone someone who specifically coded. So what I did was I completely did a cold, cold reach out or cold call, I guess you could call it, and reached out to a girl who I met on Instagram actually, but lived in the same city I live in. And she was a developer at Shopify at the time. And I said, hey, you know, this is my predicament. I really love like 
following your career journey, never met her, anything like that, but just kind of put myself out there. And she said, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't have the time right now, but I know a friend who does and would help tutor you. And for me, this was the most valuable part of learning how to code was meeting with this lady once a week. I did pay her a little bit. It wasn't crazy, but compensate her for her time. And once a week we met and we went through different problems or different um, projects I was building. At the time I was focusing on learning React. So we focused a lot on React and it was such a great way to really speed up my coding journey because I really trusted her and felt that I could ask any questions without feeling as though I was silly or stupid for asking them. And it also held me accountable. So, you know, I would have to, we met once a week, so I'd have to have something completed or part of a project completed to show her. So we had things to go over and talk about. And I, I know maybe not everyone is in the position where they can um, hire a mentor or a tutor, but I know there are so many wonderful people out there who would do it for free or for a coffee, um, especially if you are showing that you're really interested and want to be there. It makes the other person feel as though their time isn't being wasted, but it's actually, you're valuing it as well. Also, as a side note, if you can't have a mentor, make sure to ask your questions on Stack Overflow. Need I say more? The third tip or the third mistake I wish I wouldn't have made when I was learning how to code is putting so much pressure on myself. I put immense pressure on myself when I was learning how to code that I needed to learn in a specific time span and I needed to get a job in a specific time span. And if I didn't do both, I was a failure. And I had all these really negative thoughts about not um, reaching these crazy, ridiculous timelines that I needed to be a pro in coding. And that can really come into play, especially when you are needing to find a job after you are learning how to code. Many people learn how to code, obviously, to find a job. And if you're feeling as though you're not picking things up quick enough, it can be very stressful because you're like, okay, I'm learning this so I can get a job, but I'm not picking it up fast enough and I need money. And it's a whole cycle and I've been there. But my biggest piece of advice is when I, before I give my piece of advice, I'll tell you a story that relates to it actually without jumping around too much. But when I was in my coding bootcamp, I, uh, there were so many people at the beginning of the coding bootcamp that would actually um, balance job hunting with learning how to code. And in turn, I don't think very many of those people actually got a job or really learned how to code because they were focusing on too many things at once. And I saw this happening. So instead I was like, you know what? I'm going to treat job hunting or co learning how to code like a job. And then the job hunting part like a job. The next biggest mistake I made was learning more than one programming language at once. And before you come at me, especially computer science students being, or computer science people being like, we learn more than one programming language at once, what's the big deal? And good for you, that's amazing. But for someone who was a self-taught developer and then went to a coding bootcamp, when I started learning more than one programming language at once, it became extremely confusing as someone who came from no technical background. and very overwhelming and in turn i didn't really fully grasp the concepts of either language i just kind of skimmed over both so that was really at the early stages because when you get into this field you see there's so many different programming languages and on a lot of job applications it's like you need to know 20 different programming languages and frameworks which is not true but it can feel the time as though you need to have a ton of different technologies um, that you, you are familiar with or proficient in, proficient, proficient, you know what I mean, good at. And it can be kind of overwhelming. So you think naturally, well, I'll just learn more than one at once, I'll be super keen, and it's not a good way to go at all. Uh, and once I learned that and I took a step back, I started just focusing on JavaScript and it made a world of a difference just focusing on one programming language and taking the time to really dive into that versus skim over a few. That being said though, I also wanna highlight when you are job hunting and there is job posting and it says, you know, maybe you know JavaScript, but the job is for PHP. You don't need to spend hours ahead of time learning PHP 
um, just because you don't know it, the job, any good hire like recruiter or company will understand that if you know one programming language, it's way easier to pick up a second. The first one is always the hardest because you're not only learning how to code, but you're also learning how to learn, how to think in a different way, how to use logic, how to problem solve. And once you have those skills built up, learning another programming language is so much easier. I can tell you from experience because my first job was with PHP and I had no prior learning experience in it. I was a JavaScript girl going into PHP and I thought, what am I doing? But it was way more easier than I thought picking up another language would be. Okay, those are my top mistakes I made. Top meaning there were so many mistakes I could go on and on. And you know, that's human nature. We're going to make mistakes. And rather than thinking of them as failures, switching our mindset and thinking of it as a learning experience that we can grow from and become better at. And that's really I wanted, why I wanted to share with you some of my mistakes that I've made is because not only to help you hopefully not make them, but to identify and recognize that we all are going to make mistakes. There's gonna be part of your coding journey where it feels really difficult and you're questioning everything you're doing and why you're doing it. But at the end of the day, if in the big picture, when you envision what you want to do, if it's coding and it's building the future and building different with different technologies, then stick with it and you will get there. It's just, there's just this, I forget who it was who said that people often quit right on the brink of greatness. And I think that's so true that so many people will give up on their dreams or their goals or their learnings right before it's about to click or right before it hits big because they're so tired and exhausted. And if you would have just pushed through, you would have got there. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it valuable. Please leave in the comments other videos you want to see. That's how, as I mentioned, I make these videos. And also make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related content. Okay, thanks everyone.